how a multi-billion AI agents infrastructure project almost got hacked. This is a story about the recent virtual security incident. This video is based on the article that was posted in shlomi.uk and we're gonna discuss so many interesting things about what is virtual's protocol, how we found the vulnerability, how much money he could make by exploiting it and how much money he got by disclosing it in a responsible manner and getting a bounty for his work. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video so the algorithm will recommend you more content that is related to DeFi security and hacks. Now without further ado, let's get started. So we're starting with some intro. AI agents are the next big thing and the most hot topic in cryptocurrencies. Virtuals is a platform that is deployed on the base layer 2 on top of Ethereum and it has $2.3 billion in TVL. It's a platform that allows you to deploy AI agents and essentially it's the application store of AI agents, some kind of infrastructure and currently there are more than 12,000 AI agents deployed in the platform. Now they have the flagship AI agent which is called AIXBT. Its market cap is on $641 million and any agent has also its token and a liquidity is being added to Uniswap version 2 and it also has its prompt and a social media account where he posts and this is essentially how virtuals work. So you deploy an agent, then you prepare some prompts and then it tweets stuff and publish posts on X. It has its own token and its own liquidity that is added to Uniswap V2 on base and it updates through contributions. So it always gets updated with new data and feeds on new data and based on this data, it posts different stuff on Twitter. And this is an important point because it's related to the vulnerability that was found and could be exploited. These contributions are stored both in Amazon S3 and IPFS. I want you to remember this important point. So this is how it looks like. It has a token called virtual. Currently, the price is around $3, $3.5. This is the market cap, $2.3 billion. A lot of volume, people are trading these tokens and these AI agents back and forth, both. And the virtual token is the foundation of all the other AI tokens. You can see here, this is a screenshot from the virtuals website. We have all the leading agents. The first one is AIXBT. At the moment of taking this screenshot, the market cap is $700 million. We have Game, Toshi, Vader, Luna, and so on. Now, the interesting thing about this vulnerability is that it's not really related to blockchains or smart contracts, but it's more like traditional cybersecurity mm -hmm. penetration testing kind of vulnerability that led to this discovery. If you want to learn more about smart contract security and blockchain hacking and become a professional that is able to provide security services, hack smart contracts, and maybe create a new career for yourself, check out the complete smart contract hacking training that comes with so many topics and of course a Discord community and of course an official certificate that is recognized by the biggest auditing firms out there. So let's see how the vulnerability was found. First, it started with some digging. So like traditional cybersecurity researchers, they go to websites, start engaging with the application and listening to the network and to the requests that the application is making from the front end to the back end. In one of the requests, the researcher saw this result from the back end, from the server. So he got a JSON result with a status success and with the data of a token. Of course, this token is censored, but this looks suspicious. When you get some kind of response from a web server with a token, it might be sensitive because you're not supposed to be exposed to tokens and private keys. And this token is actually an API key that gives you access to a private repository on GitHub. Well, you might ask, why do you need to give an API key to a repo? You can just make it public. Well, this is a good question, but 
whatever. This is how it works. And this led the security researcher to think about the idea that maybe these developers are not that experienced and maybe they made more mistakes because they just did this silly thing of exposing a private key to GitHub uh, in their uh, front end. And the interesting part relies within the Git history of this particular GitHub repository. So the security researcher uh, used a tool called TruffleHack, which is an open source tool that allows you to find leaked credentials. And he activated this tool on this specific GitHub repository. And then the results were very, very interesting. So in the history of the commit, of this uh, GitHub repository, this tool called TruffleHug was able to extract some sensitive files that include some sensitive information like AWS secret keys and passwords and so on for the Redis database. Um, so a lot of sensitive information that is not supposed to be exposed. And you have to remember, so first you get the access to this repository through this public accessible token. And then in the history, in the Git history of this repository, uh, there were some files that were removed that included this sensitive information. And the interesting thing about GitHub is that even if you remove certain files from your GitHub repository, Git history always remembers and you can always go back to previous commits and then extract those files. And this is exactly how this truffle hog tool works. Now, from this sensitive information in the GitHub repository, we got API keys for Amazon that gives us access to the S3, to the storage parts of Amazon, where all the characteristics of those AI agents are stored. And this gave the researcher the opportunity to modify all the prompts and all the information in this S3 buckets that is attached to all the agents, all the 12K plus agents that are deployed through virtuals can be edited. To be precise, the character card of every agent could be modified. So the way it works is that a developer of the AI agent can access the configuration of the agent through the virtuals platform. And this is how it looks like in the front end. So if you deployed, let's say Luna, the AI token, uh, AI agent Luna, you can access it with your uh, private key and then modify the data set that will be attached to Luna. And Luna is one of the most famous agents. It has a huge market cap. Um, and this is how much the token worth. Now, the POC that the researcher created, he injected its username into the Luna character card, which shows that he can essentially modify the character card of the Luna agent or any other agent, AIXBT or any other agent in the platform, and just inject its own data, its own text, its own prompt to the agent. And I want you to think, to pause and think, all right, so it can influence character card and modify the prompt of the agent. What can he maliciously do to get benefit out of it? And the attack scenario and the profit plan is simply just create a new AI agent or a new token and then make all the other agents shield your token, your rug pull token, by modifying their prompts and their character cards. And eventually when people... It's a lot of power, a lot of power, right? When a lot of AI agents are tweeting and, and shilling and posting about this new token that everyone should buy. And then people buy your token and you just rock pull and you can make hundred millions of dollars just scamming and hacking other users by taking advantage of this disclosure and this vulnerability. But of course, the researcher is a white hat hacker, luckily, and he uh, wanted to report it. He didn't want to exploit it and make money on top of other people. He just wanted to report it in a responsible way and get a bounty for it. The challenge was that this uh, virtuals platform didn't have an official bug bounty program. And this is usually very tricky because you don't really know who you are talking with. Sometimes the teams are anonymous. Maybe you send a DM on Twitter and the wrong person reads it and then exploits it themselves. And then you might risk the whole ecosystem just by not doing the right thing and going through the right flow. So just for these cases, we have something called SEAL Security Alliance and 911 line. And this is exactly what the researcher did. And they got him connected with the real official virtual team and eventually received a $10,000 bounty, which in my opinion is not that much, but I mean, he could make way more if he would take the black hat side, obviously it's great that he didn't do it, uh, but I just think that this is a bit undervalued to such vulnerability. 
But of course, since there is no official bug bounty program, I think the researcher knew that he might not even get anything at all and they probably downgraded the finding and the vulnerability and it's quite sad to be honest but i hope that in the future projects will learn from that and security researchers will be more compensated for their hard work if you're interested to dive more into security and web3 hacking check out again the smart contract hacking course subscribe to the channel and like this video to get exposed to more high quality blockchain hacking content Thank you so much and I will see you in the next guide.